got only your laptop GPU but huge LLM dreams? Today, we will kick off episode 1 of our 6-part AI optimization series, starting with Prefill vs Decode, using NVIDIA's latest inference engine, AI Dynamo. First, the question is, why AI inference is slow sometimes? Uh, in GPT or DeepSeek, have you encountered a, like server error or loading issue? Is it because the hardware is not fast enough? Or is it the algorithm that's not smart enough? The answer might be counterintuitive. It's actually how we deploy the AI that caused this problem. So it's a system problem. Has anyone heard of Preview and Decode? Probably no. So, yep. Yeah. The uh, prefill is the first phase and the decode is the second. Uh, how to understand these? So when you give a prompt, say what is the capital of the US, it will first do the prefill phase. So what is the capital will be filled in this input matrix. If you give it a 5,000, 4,000 word essay, this will be 4,000 dimension matrix, right? And then the matrix multiplication will be very huge. 4,000 multiplied by 4,000. And this is the preview phase, which can be done in this parallel matrix multiplication. So it requires a super high compute. And then the secondly, the decoding phase. When you see the GPT respond, is it token by token, like word by word, instead of just giving a huge paragraph, right? So the reason it output word by word is because after it generates the first response, Z, it will use this as the input and then produce the second token and then feed in the second token and produce the third output token. As you can see, the computation is just one row instead of this 4,000 row matrix. So this is a very low compute, but it requires storing a lot of memory, such as the first token generated and then the second token generated, and also all those 4,000 words beforehand. So this is a memory intensive process. Any questions on those two vocabulary? So do you mind re-explaining the, um, the second part of decoding? Yeah, sure. When GPT starts to respond, it will uh, multiply in the previous matrix and it will generate the next token, such as the capital. And then we use this capital to feed into the model and then it will generate it. Uh, so the first part, it will take in the entire prompt and do a huge matrix multiplication. Whereas here, it's a very small matrix multiplication. Any questions? When you say feed inside, what does like feeding capital inside mean? Like you have a transformer model. So you feed in like the token Z and the transformer will output the next predicted token, which is capital. It couldn't generate three tokens at a time but only generate one token at a time. Uh, does that make uh, sense? So, oh, yeah, it makes sense, but is the is the matrix on the right-hand side the same with the key transpose matrix? Here, good question. So the, the purple part is the memory from the first part's computation. So we first process the thing, generate a, a notes of my thinking to be this purple thing. And then it, the decode phase will keep generating token by token using this purple notes of this previous summary. 
Great question. Awesome. To give an in-depth understanding, I know you guys are very math inclined. If we're given three tokens, so it will compute three matrices, QKV, and you multiply them together and generate the summary of the input. And then we feed the summary into this model again. It will produce the next token. And then we feed in the next token to predict the third token. This token by token phase is called decode. And the first, this ingestion or thinking phase is just 4,000 token at a time. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, very nice. Uh, so after the mass part, what is the pain point of the current solution? So the current solution is we have a single uh, GPU or CPU. Uh, have any of you used PyTorch before or TensorFlow? A little bit. A little bit. So in, in TensorFlow, you would define a model and then give an input. This model will produce something. Uh, and you just execute this script. So all of these execution, like Python executing the script, will be done in one GPU. Now this model calling will have two phases. First is the prefill phase, which ingests the input. And second is the decoding phase, token by token output. What is the problem of using a single uh, computer to do this? If you think about the input ingestion phase needs a lot of matrix computation, 4,000 row matrix. Whereas the second phase of decode is uses a very small matrix. So the computation is very light. What might be a problem of using the same uh, instrument to execute both tasks. If we provide a very good GPU that satisfy this uh, 4,000 row computation, this GPU is very happy. But during the second phase, it's only calculating one row at a time. So it's not using its full power, right? So in the second phase, it's just wasting a lot of resource using a strong GPU just to calculate one row. Therefore, this uh, GPU usage for the second phase is very low. If we use a single instrument to do both type of tasks. Now, what's the solution? NVIDIA, you probably know it's, it's a hardware company, but it's also secretly developing Dynamo, which aims to solve the problem of single node computation. So putting this reader and this announcer, so the decoder uh, at the same node will waste a lot of energy when doing the second phase. So the solution is supplying the first phase with a high compute GPU, like A100. Whereas for the second phase, it will use a much more less expensive GPU. You can have more space to store the memory that the first uh, prefill generates. This will save a lot of cost. This 800 GPU will only do the prefill phase, so only process the prompt. The second smaller GPU will do this decoding. It will save a lot of cost. Any questions? In the um, decode uh, stage, like you can't really run the computations in parallel because each one depends on the previous one, right? So, yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfectly perfect. But then what's the point of having multiple GPUs if you can't? Great question. So in production, there might be multiple users, right? Like GPT server, there will be a hundred users. So 100 requests will be, will come in simultaneously. So one 
can handle this one request, the other decoder can handle the request too. Thank you. The decode request, it is opening a old chat. So the prompt is already computed, but you want to have a new tokens output. So those will be decoding only requests. What is the result of this, this aggregation of prefill and decode? It resulted in a three times speed improvement. Time to the first token. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, please. Um, so, but you, you just mentioned that um, the previous process only works in the decoding process. I mean, you, when you use three GPUs rather than one in, in your example, but mm -hmm. when you say t time to the first token, isn't that r only reliant on the um, the prefill process? Isn't the time to the first token only dependent on the prefill process? But why is that improved as well? Exactly. That's a very good question. Uh, imagine there are three requests. So some are requests are decode only requests. In the normal traditional one, the decode will uh, saturate the GPU and the prefill will have to wait. But here, if we disaggregate them, the decode can be processed by the other two and the prefill can just start immediately. So you are very right that time to first token is dependent only on the prefill. But if we decode and prefill in the same instance, they can interfere each other's performance, right? So your so the time here is calculated when you have like a large number of consecutive requests. And so like that? Yeah, yeah. In decode prefill interference, which will happen on if you put them on a single machine. So if you prioritize prefill, you will sacrifice the decode, and this is the drawback of putting them on the same same instance. Any questions? Prefill is se it's separated into like three iterations rather than one full iteration. Is that right? Or it means uh, three of them are both having thirty percent load instead of one instance having one hundred percent load, which is bad. Oh, so okay, so you can do that for prefill because prefill doesn't depend on the previous um token, but you can't do that for decode because decode needs to be co it depends on the previous token needs to be um coherent it needs to be consecutive. So, but it only operates like thirty percent. So you can use the rest of like one GPU, for example. Is that right? So if we use a smaller GPU we can have like still the 30% saturation, where if we have, we use the same powerful GPU, it will only have like 1% load, which is not ideal. Yeah, the idea is not very difficult. So we want to use dedicated machine for dedicated types of computation. So finally, uh, you might be interested in what is the next high paying career? As you see, uh, right now, company are building AI factories, thousands of GPUs and outputting millions of token. Now there, the AI engineering role is rising. This is a blend of hardware and software. So how to prepare for this career? Instead of the machine learning books, this book involves the system design of networks, also load balancing, also fault tolerance, which means if you have one of the workers down, how to use backup workers to replace it. But if you are more inclined to math and algorithms, another high paying field is optimization. Have any of you taken a course in optimization? No. H have you heard of a course called optimization? Mathematically? No. Only in my fourth year, I heard about this optimization course uh, is in the mathematics department. The NVIDIA manager will ask about optimization and scalability. 
what does optimization mean given a budget of say a thousand dollars gpu one the powerful gpu cost save like 50 dollars per hour and the gpu two the low compute one costs 20 dollars per hour the big gpu can output a hundred token per hour and this small one can output only 30 tokens per hour. How many GPU two you should buy with this a thousand dollar to maximize this unit output here? Does that make sense? Is it, isn't this just like a linear program? Great question. So one solution to this is linear program. Can you help us to describe what a linear program solves? Yeah, so you can either maximize uh, or minimize an objective function uh, set to a certain amount of constraints. So in this case, I guess it's 100 and like 30 per hour, and then we have the cost. So in this case, we want to maximize the, the usage, or we can minimize cost. That's very excellent. You guys are good. Does it only have to do with money-wise buying hardware? So like, I would have assumed it would have been like something internally. This is a basic example. Second one is the hyperparameter optimization. This might be what you're thinking about, right? For example, the learning rate, should I set it to 10 to the negative five or 10 to the negative three? And 10 to the negative five will train for 10 hours. This will train for five hours. Was that something you are asking, Brian? Yeah, I guess. I was just wondering if there's like anything other than hardware, I guess. Yeah, gradient descent, which is also an optimization problem, right? Optimizing the loss function. Uh, so back to this linear programming, can we use this? Well, in real life, there are three parties, user, machine, and output. So there are different users. So user one can be a premium user. It needs fast response rate under 10 milliseconds. Whereas the normal user can sustain a latency of 100 milliseconds. And also GPUs, you have like type one, type two, type three. How to satisfy all three parties? One is called neural estimator. That's all of the presentation I had.